Welcome to the International School of Gemology's comparison of dichroism of Oregon sunstone to the claimed Tibet Andesine. It's always been known that the Oregon sunstone has a very unique reaction to a dichroscope and it's actually un unusual to anything else in the world. And the interesting thing is for all the claims from the Tibetan mining people that their material is the same as the Oregon material, uh, optically it is totally different through a dichroscope. And rather than showing a lot of photographs and trying to explain photographs and, and things through uh, a written report, we thought that we would instead actually just shoot a video and let you see this material itself, that we would compare the Oregon sunstone to the Tibet Andesine and let you see this through a dichroscope yourself and see the unusual differences. We want to first talk about the dichroism. Dichroism, of course, is multiple colors coming out of a gemstone, and a dichroscope allows us to separate this using Polaroid filters, polarizing filters, and basically let us view the two colors and sometimes three coming out of a gemstone at one time. That's an optical property. The important factor about this is, is when you have a color that's been artificially induced into a stone, just like these colors drawn out on a paper, you do not get the dichroic effect. Both sides of the dichroic uh, filters here will give you the same colors with no real changes. With the Oregon sunstone, this particular stone is one of the most profound that we have. And you will see this is from the double eagle number 16. We're using a London dichroscope here. This particular dichroscope is about 10 years old, but we've got some photographs that we want to show you, and we're going to make sure that we use the same piece of equipment to test all stones. So this dichroscope, this London dichroscope, it's about 10 years old, but it shows you the, the incredible color differences, the, the incredible dichroism of this particular gemstone from Double Eagle number 16 in Plush, Oregon. And the reaction to this, we wanted to show in video because there's no way to really see this unless you see it on video to see how profoundly unusual this is for the dichroism in the true Oregon sunstone. When we look at a piece of Tibet Andesine, however, and this is from the Abdurian expedition, this is one of the pieces from King Star that we got, you can see you don't get any optical reaction to the London dichroscope. The optical reaction, the dichroic colors that would be in a natural gemstone of this type are not there. You're getting the same reaction as an artificially induced color, just like we drew out on paper. And that's why we believe there's such a difference in the dichroscope reaction. Here is a, another piece of Oregon sunstone. This is another piece of rough. It's a little different color formation. You can see that still through the London dichroscope. And you can see this even with the calcite dichroscope. It's just that it's so very difficult to actually video through a small handheld dichroscope. But with the London dichroscope we're able to see. Once again we've got a Tibet Andesine. Based on what we've seen with the natural organ material we should be getting very clear and distinct separation of the colors with this London dichroscope because of the dichroic reactions that the natural organ material has. But this once again we're getting the same thing that we got when we had the piece of paper that we drew red and green colors into. It simply does not react to the dichroscope because the colors are artificially induced. The colors were artificially induced on that piece of paper that we looked at. We believe that this is a good indicator that the colors are artificially induced in this Tibet Andesine. This specimen of Oregon sunstone I personally dug up on our ISG rush to plush that we had and I dug this out from the Panama mine there in, in plush and you can see it's even a it's a fairly light color but it does still have a profound dichroic effect it's got the dichroism that we have come to expect from natural copper based felspars as in the the Oregon sunstone itself and you can see this once again we shoot the video because we want you to see just how profound this color change is through the through the dichroscope and yet, once again, we take something that's fairly comparable from the Tibet Andesine. This is from Lido, Lido Gems, who was also one of the members of the expedition who supposedly went to Tibet and found this. Once again, you've got the same reaction of a red and green pen on a piece of paper. You don't have any reaction to this. There's no dichroism. The colors are the same type of reaction as you would have artificially induced in the stone. The color is simply induced in the stone. It is not a, a part of the optical makeup of the stone. And this, once again, a video tells so much more than some report and some scientific 
voodoo, whatever, about, you know, some what the reports are in the scientists. This you can see for yourself. That's why we wanted to take the time to shoot this video, and also why we wanted to shoot various stones with it. Because we wanted to go back and forth and let you see, this is not something that just happens with one or two specimens. Here you can see yet another one. This is another Oregon sunstone. We have hundreds. In fact, in, in the office here in the ISG, we probably have thousands of Oregon specimens of various types between the rough and the faceted and everything else. I, I know that it's in the thousands, at least 2,000 specimens we have that all give this reaction. This is the natural copper-based reaction to the London Dichroscope. We see it in the Oregon material. We do not see it in the Tibet Andesine. And even in very small pieces, this is a piece that's a very small little chip and you're seeing this under 30 power. I want to show you how profound this color is. This is just amazing. In the world of gemstones and gemology, to be able to take an old London dichroscope that's obviously has had some wear and tear and have a little piece and have it under 30 power and still get this kind of color reaction to a dichroscope, this is a profoundly important point about this material. The Oregon material shows the strong dichroism because of what the, the way the copper acts within the stone and we don't get this from the Tibetan material. And we've got one more specimen coming up here that's very important I want you to see. This is one of the specimens from Ms. Johnson that's involved with the DSN class action and the, the litigation actually with DSN against, uh, against myself personally. Look at the reaction to this stone. This stone was cut in half by Dr. Rossman. This was, this was sold by Direct Shopping Network. It was cut in half by Dr. Rossman, and half was sent to me. The other half was sent to the other side in this litigation. But once again, you know, you can create all kinds of reports with potassium argon and LAICPMS and everything else, but look at the optical properties of this stone. It does not react to a dichroscope. There's no dichroism in here, which you would expect based on what we're seeing because you've got the red and green. And when we take this up in, in magnification, we're looking at it at 30 power now. Once again, from the natural organ, we've seen we should be getting a, a dichroic reaction, and we don't. Because of the high, high magnification here, you can't really see the, the line of the London spectroscope, or excuse me, the, the London dichroscope so closely. But you can see you don't have any dichroism. You don't have any separation of colors because these colors have been artificially induced. They have been artificially treated into this stone that's a part of this litigation and there's just not any potassium argon testing that can ever undo the optical properties that you are seeing right here for yourself. And just a few more for fun because quite frankly some of these are so much fun you just like to play with them with the with the dichroscope, with the London dichroscope. This piece is also from the Pana mine. The, the Pana, P-A-N-A, -A, the, the Pana mine in, in Plush is a, is a new mine location that is producing some profound green colors, some beautiful green colors. And we're finding that the dichroism of this material out of this mine is really a lot of fun to play with. I actually purchased this particular specimen because just because it was so cool I had to have it. And you can see with the, with the dichroscope, with the London dichroscope here, you can see the extreme reaction that you get from this stone, from the National Oregon, Oregon Sunstone. And what did I wanted to do, because you had this long coloring, this long line coloring, is we actually had a piece from Lido Gems. This is again from the Abdurian Expedition. We actually had this long coloring again, and we wanted to look at this and see if we could compare. And once again, we got no reaction. And if we move this around and go in from different directions, there's no reaction. The color does not react to the dichroscope. It's the same thing as an induced color on a piece of paper. And the concept of dichroic reaction from the Tibet material is just not there. And even in very light colors, we've, we've taken some very light colors just to test a lot of different types of specimens of Oregon material. Even in the very light colors, we still get a dichroic reaction through the London dichroscope and also through the calcite dichroscope. And this has been important because we've tried to do this test on every type of specimen that we have, large and small, dark and light, everything that we have. And once again, when we do the same thing back with the Tibet Andesine, and we put the, the London dichroscope on this, we don't get a reaction. There's a light to dark reaction, sort of, just because you've, you're dealing in polarized light and you're, you're looking through two different directions of polar, polarized light with this. 
But the simple fact is that with the Tibet material, you're seeing here, it looks like the same color type reaction as you get from drawing colors on a piece of paper. That's what we're getting out of the Tibet material. Whereas the Oregon material is profound in its reaction to the dichroscope. And that's why going back and taking one more look at this, this piece is just so incredible that we'll just keep looking at it, honestly, because this is not something that a photograph can do justice to. This is something that when people see the photograph, they think, well, that's cool, but they think we have put a photograph together. Maybe we Photoshop this. But as we turn this around, you can see that the dichroscope reaction is, is directional, as it should be. And as you're seeing on the video, this is real time through the video. This is not something that has been photoshopped. It's not a photograph where you've had two halves of a stone put together that, that look the same color. You're seeing actual real-time reactions of Oregon sunstone and the dichroic reaction. And this is something that is very unique to the Oregon material and something that we just are not finding in the Tibet Andesine. So once again, we want to tell you that dichroic reaction is a very important. It's an optical property of a gemstone, such as this tanzanite. It's an optical property that we see in Oregon sunstone that we do not see in the Tibetan material. And it's because when it does not respond, it's because you have an artificially induced color. The color is artificially induced like a dye or like a diffused color into the stone. And as a result of that, you do not get the dichroic reaction in an artificially colored stone that you get from a naturally colored stone. And in this case, the Oregon sunstone is naturally colored by copper. The Tibetan material, as we have thought all along, is artificially induced for color.